and welcome to the Daily Debate Live Thursdays with Tagreet Hussain here on Nile TV International. Well, uh, tonight we'll be talking about a topic that is going uh, to shape the future and uh, especially also uh, the, in the interest of future generations, artificial intelligence. How is it shaping the future uh, today? Everything we love about civilization is a product of intelligence. So amplifying our human intelligence with artificial intelligence has the potential of helping civilizations uh, to flourish like never before. Things that we only see on the, the science fiction movies may be even closer than we all uh, think. With the internet uh, today also making things possible, uh, well, imagine uh, how our imagination is going uh, to take us in the uh, future of artificial intelligence, how it can play a role in our lives, how it can shape uh, our future significant progress in uh, machine learning techniques. The machines today, as we all know, can solve a lot uh, of world problems and uh, this through uh, collecting and analyzing and also processing uh, data. So. Uh, this has been also a matter of interest. His Excellency President Abdel Fattah Sisi has given directives to the National Training Academy in order to establish a regional center to advance the use of artificial intelligence. And uh, it is co-relevant always with uh, Egypt's sustainable development goals. How are we working on sustainable development goals today? And what will be the role that is going to be played by artificial intelligence uh, in that respect? Having all the honor uh, to talk about this uh, interesting topic with uh, Professor Dr. Ahmed Abdel Tawab, Professor of Linguistics uh, at Munufeya University. Dr. Abdel Tawab, welcome. Welcome back. Thank you very much for having me, Tagreed. Always a pleasure to be with you. Thank you. Great to have you once Thank again. You and together we'll be reading uh, this important title in the use of uh, artificial intelligence. Dr. Abdel Tawab wrote in Al Ahram uh, the, in this edition in this week more about this uh, topic. Egypt, as the president has always stated, has no time uh, to waste as the world is today leaping forward. So we need to move at the same pace of how uh, the world world is moving today. In that respect, the president underlined the necessity of being part of the ongoing global industrial revolution which is taking place. And this means that we have to uh, take artificial intelligence uh, into uh, consideration. Well, Dr. Abdel Tawab, uh, first of all, to make it clearer <laughs> to our viewers, uh, right. not just Googling artificial intelligence, right. but uh, if we can simplify artificial right. intelligence, what does it mean? How can we define it? Well, well, first of all, thank you, Terry, for raising such a topic. It's very interesting, very important to talk about this today. This is a watershed issue that we are witnessing nowadays, not just in the Middle East, but across the world. Um, we are talking about artificial intelligence, and there is a strategic step that Egypt has taken, which mm -hmm. is to set up and to create the National Council for Artificial Intelligence. Yes. What does it mean? It means that there is something critical happening in the world, and Egypt is just tracking down what are the positives of such a point in order to get the job done. So artificial intelligence, in a simple way, to make it simple to everyone, to our viewers today, is just how can we make the digitalization process being involved in every aspect in our life. Mm -hmm. So it's not just about the education, but the social life. It's also about something related to the development process. We are talking here about the sustainable process that we have in our daily life. And we can just find the electronics happening in every aspect in our life. Just before I come here, I read a statement coming from the Minister of Finance. He was mm -hmm. talking about that the digital transformation for Egypt it's a strategic tool that we have in order to go for the future. And as you said in your introductory part, you were talking about the future, the imagination, and I think that this is the critical point. It is how to shape our future by talking about artificial intelligence. Yes. And it's not just about, it's not just about the educational aspect, as I said, but it's also about the economic reasons as well. Yes. We're going to talk about something which is called the economy of knowledge. Mm -hmm. So the economies today across the globe is not just about money or it's not just about funding, but it's more about the information, more about the data that we have, that we control, that we can transform as well. Exactly. The data that we can have, that we uh, transform. How can we, uh, like, make use of 
the right. tools that we do have right. today in order to, to serve that right. aspect. Right. You know, Tahrir, there is something quite a bit significant to mention as well. We have something which is called Egypt's Vision 2030. Yes. This is extremely important to spotlight on this point. Mm -hmm. Because what we have here, we have a strategic plan that Egypt has already set for everyone. Which means mm -hmm. that we are trying to change the educational system that we have nowadays starting from the schools to the universities as well but there is something more critical which is how to increase the efficiency of the performance of the government as well mm. and how to change the mindset of the people as well mm. and let me just stop here to make my comment on this point because here we are talking we don't want it to be just the users of technology, but we would like to change to be the producers of technology. This is quite a bit important. We would like to spotlight <coughs> on the role of the youth and the role of women as well in our society. So there is integration process between both sides, as you can see. Mm -hmm. We would like also to make a positive interactions among different individuals in the society. This is probably can be the core point for the vision, which is how to build a country that is based on knowledge and information. Yes, a country which is based on knowledge <clears throat> and information. What does it take to build a country based on knowledge and information? Well, and how can we make mm -hmm. the youth uh, well hands-on and right. quite integrated to share in this process? Well, you know what? Um, there is something happening on the ground, but people need to be aware about that. Mm. So the first step when we talk about the economy of knowledge, it is something which is called electronic government. And we already have started doing something like this. So we have today something which is called the electronic gate for the government. This is something quite a bit critical to yes. talk about. Mm -hmm. um, there is also a dramatic change happening when it comes to the syllabi for education. Mm -hmm. So we are just moving from the traditional ways of learning to another different technique of learning. Yes. So the students in the past, they used to have which is called the rote learning style. Today mm -hmm. we have something which is based on innovative. What does it mean? It means that we can just create different job opportunities. You can make the graduates, the graduates from universities and college to be adaptable to the changes happening in the world. And at the same time, we can just find a connection between what's happening outside the country and inside the country. And at the end, when you talk about the economy of knowledge, we have different and we have major pillars that we should consider here in this way. The first and the most critical point that we have when it comes to the economy of knowledge, it is knowledge. Yes. It is the information that we should have. And I think that's something very important to mention as well, which is called the infrastructure of information. We have to understand that in the upcoming years, it's not going to be the same as we have before, the traditional ways, but it's going to be based on innovation. It's going to be something based on creativity. It's going to be something based on how to gather, how to control, how to have the information. Yes. What's happening today, the developments in the Middle East, as you can see, it's all about to what extent you can control and you can get the technology that can help you to move forward. Egypt started already doing that, and I think that we are moving on the right track. We are moving on the right track, and Egypt started uh, in that respect, as you said, because uh, we are also engaging the youth in formulating how artificial intelligence today is going to make them more creative and, uh, and also how uh, it will affect the way how the coming generations actually uh, think. So it will definitely affect the way how they think, uh, right. how they act, and also how they chart the future. If we talk about artificial intelligence and the future, how are we going to invest in artificial intelligence for the future? I think the agree that the best investment mm. for our country just uh, revolves around the concept of our youth. Yes. So it's all about how to invest mm. the youth in our country because this is the future generation, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. And I just read a statement while coming here to the studio today that the Minister of Higher Education <clears throat> Dr. Khaled Abdel Ghaffar, and I do salute his decision to build up a technological center in every university nowadays. Mm. Why do we have such centers? Because we would like to make the students to be exposed to such changes and to such technologies that we have nowadays. And I'm going to tell you something bluntly. I'm a firm believer of the capabilities of the Egyptian youth. 
And I just read the statistics, and it says that most electronic applications nowadays in Africa are manufactured by Egyptian youth. If we imagine the capabilities and the abilities and the skills of all of such um, youth and what they are doing nowadays, now we can just understand how important it is to make and to get the best investment on them. Yeah. And so I think that one thing here that's happening on the ground, and this is something that we have to mention as well, that we have governmental universities they made a decision to move from a traditional education to be digitalized universities. Mm -hmm. If you remember in the last episodes, we were talking about smart education. So today there is a chan tangible change happening on the ground. This is something very important as well. I read that the University of um, South Valley and the, the University of Kafr Sheikh and other mm -hmm. universities as well, they have a plan to change by 2023. They have a, a plan to make something happening on the ground. And it's, it's great to see also that this sense of change and this sense of digitalization is right. also happening right. in other different governments right. and transcending uh, barriers, not right. only in Cairo. Right. Here in the PIC, we do have Robert Sophia. And uh, Robert Sophia was with us uh, at the World Youth Forum in a very important session that was entitled Artificial Intelligence in Humans, where uh, his ex Excellency, the President stated that artificial intelligence can give us a chance to eliminate human error. It can also save time and also lower corruption levels. So those are some of the different areas where artificial intelligence right. is going to be resorted to. And, and the question to read here that we have to raise up, which is mm -hmm. why we should have such digitalized process in our lifetime. In a simple way, because as you said now, one of the strategic functions that we could have of digital it's not just to make our life easier and it's not just to make our life enjoyable mm -hmm. but it's more about how to make our life more effective how to face and how to combat corruption mm -hmm. because by using digitalization we are just um, expanding the process of competitiveness as a matter of fact and at the same time we are also trying to raise the level of transparency once we talk about transparency, then we are decreasing the level of corruption. Of corruption so there yes. is a strong connection between mm -hmm. both, mm -hmm. right? It, it definitely is going to make our lives better and also uh, performing the tasks more efficiently. Uh, talking about uh, uh, science fiction and uh, movies and, well, more than one uh, right, actually right, area that right. we're going to see uh, artificial intelligence um, in, in, in the helm. And also, uh, you've mentioned, Professor, the state's uh, endeavors towards digitalization. Very soon, we're going to see uh, Digital Egypt uh, in an uh, exclusive with His Excellency, the Minister of Communication, Dr. Amr Talat. He told me that um, Digital Egypt is going to be very soon and that uh, it is going definitely to make our life uh, much easier uh, here in the country. That's very true. Mm -hmm. And we have to understand that when it comes to the information technology nowadays, it can, it just constitutes like 3% mm. of the national mm. income. Yes. And so the plan is by three years, from three to five years, we would like to make the IT sector to contribute 8% of the national income of Egypt. So there is already a plan, there is a platform, and there is a way of how can we transform. And we need to talk also about the satellite Tiba one which was launched last month, and this is something very important as well. Yes, here uh, it's me with Robert Sophia, and that was in Kazakhstan. Okay. And uh, it was uh, my exclusive interview in the presence of uh, Sophia over there. And it, it was the first time actually for me uh, to see uh, Sophia uh, performing, uh, performing a, a, like a human. And mm -hmm. uh, well, that was also a chance to know more about those robots and right. how they can really be uh, like some sort of uh, having a rapid change in our right. lives yeah. in in a year or two the this sort of interviews is going to be like uh, very much uh, easy go and on the rise right right and, mm. and, and it's part of the how can we also expand the imagination and as i said again mm. it is more about innovation it's more about creativity this is a sample of creativity and so that can um, show something very important to everyone that in the upcoming years it's not going to be the traditional way of life. 
we're going to have something different. And look to what's happening today, even in our country. When we use transportation, we're going to talk about um, to what extent digitalization is just involved. And um, I feel like it's part of my passion nowadays. I used to say language was my passion, but it's going to be also technology as well. Mm -hmm. Because once you make yourself sophisticated in technology, then you can get a lot of benefits and a lot of opportunities, as a matter of fact. Yes. This is a sample of technology that mm -hmm. we are witnessing. And I read that in the future, we're going to have uh, planes, trains, and cars with no drivers. Yeah. Um, we're going to have taxi, we're going to have, and we have this already nowadays in our country, that we have um, the taxi service, but without having, but it's all about running, all about by using applications. And when you just imagine that everything is run nowadays by applications, you can understand how important it is to talk about the topic today, which is digitalization. Uh, definitely. It right. is the constant evolution of technology and uh, how our follow-up of this constant evolution of technology is going uh, to have a rapid effect on our uh, topics of interest. Right. Yeah, Like you said, that linguistics was my passion but today right. Uh, right. it it's has technology. become also technology right. how far will technology uh, actually have a very important positive impact also on our different fields of specialties for instance how uh, technology and right. in your imagination artificial intelligence will have an impact on uh, uh, the speciality right. that we right. both of us have a passion which is linguistics and also right. translation right. are right. we going to have robots as translators I, I think we probably, yes, we are expecting to have this. Um, mm -hmm. And I read, um, and, uh, as you know, Terry, I also work in the field of simultaneous interpreting. So I, I read that it, um, a country like China, for example, they mm -hmm. invented a device that can perform the interpretation w without any mm -hmm. uh, intervention from human beings. Um, there is today applications for translation as well. There is a huge development that's happening. So to what extent machines and digitalized systems can replace human beings. It's going to be very critical, but that will happen one day in the future. But I think, on the other hand, it does have a lot of positives, um, if I would say so, um, because you can just find internet nowadays is overwhelming in every place. Mm -hmm. It's different from the past. Today, if you just ask me if you can just move without internet, I would say absolutely can not. not. Yes. Can you imagine that? Mm -hmm. So, and um, I just faced an experience last week. Uh, I didn't have internet and I couldn't manage my life. And I asked myself a question. I was not like that 10 years ago. So the situation now is different. Our life is based on such a critical point and it makes the world also more and more practical. And it also pushes us to think about out-of-the-box ideas to move forward. Uh, definitely. Uh, we're always thinking of the out-of-the-box uh, ideas because out-of-the-box uh, ideas brings uh, creativity. And uh, this is what we really aspire uh, for the youth. His Excellency, the President, orders the establishment of a center, specific center on artificial intelligence and sustainable in development. See the link how uh, artificial intelligence is going to serve uh, sustainability in Egypt and the different mega development projects all over the country. Let's watch. المرحلة القادمة من مسيرة العمل الوطني تفرض علينا وضع الإنسان المصري في مقدمة أولويات الدولة من خلال إطلاق استراتيجية شاملة لإصلاح وتطوير منظومة التعليم تتوازى مع البدء في تطبيق منظومة التأمين الصحي المتكامل الفترة دي هي بصراحة خطوة كويسة جدا كلام ولا في الأحلى الناس مش مصدقة نفسها تضافركم معانا حينجح سواء كان في التعليم أو في الصحة والكلام ده للمفكرين والمثقفين والإعلاميين بالإضافة للمجتمع أي حد عنده قوام انتظار يتصل بالرقم الساخن وربنا هيكرمه شاء الله من قوائم الانتظار مع حضرتك ينجح أي نظام 
في الدولة البصرية تأمين صحي تعليم استثمار تنمية إلا بالاستقرار والأمن صراحة حاسس بالشعب لا في تغيير في البلد مس قلوب المصريين كلهم ادوا دفعة للنجاح وشجعوا وحطوا ايديكم معانا في ان احنا المنظومة تنجح انا لو تخيرني بان انا اكل ولا عالج دول لا عالج دول President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi has asked the National Training Academy to establish a regional center to advance the use of artificial intelligence, AI, to implement sustainable development goals. In a speech during the closing session of the third edition of the World Youth Forum, President el-Sisi announced a number of resolutions, including partnerships between the World Youth Forum and international forums concerned with young people and their issues. He mandated the Egyptian Ministry of Immigration to coordinate with competent authorities and the forum to launch an initiative entitled Boats of Success to raise awareness of illegal immigration. He said a campaign would be launched called 100 Words with the aim of spreading messages of peace. Other resolutions from the closing session included launching a global documentary contest on the topic of the Sustainable Development Goals coordination between the Forum and Egypt Foreign Ministry to work on the launch of a Euro Mediterranean Youth Forum to tackle the challenges of the Mediterranean countries, the establishment of an educational city in New Alamein City, and the establishment of an international center that aims to integrate youth and groups in post-conflict settings. He asked the Forum in 2020 to adopt a strategy for cooperation regarding the fourth industrial revolution and asked the Foreign Ministry to coordinate to boost African work to support food security policies. President El-Sisi also asked the Forum and the Foreign and Irrigation Ministries to coordinate to host workshops on water security amid scarcity and to hold a simulation model with youth from participating countries. Concluding his speech, the president urged world leaders to listen to young people and give them a chance to express themselves. He urged the leaders to make youth proactive and not followers, and to arm them with elders' experiences and don't leave them to be bait for those who spread hatred. The four-day forum, the first edition of which was held in November 2017, witnessed discussions on artificial intelligence, blockchain technology, women's empowerment, and the arts and cinema, among other topics. حرصت جدا جدا على ان يكون في فرصه لشبابنا في ان هو يتولى المناصب الخاصه بالحكومه سواء كان في المحافظات او في الوزاره. نحن سنفتتح جيل جديد من الجامعات خلال العام الدراسي القادم فيها كل العلوم التي تتحدثون عنها. رسالة للشعب المصري ورسالة للإعلامين في مصر دي معركة أنتم تقودوها إذا كنتم مؤمنين بأمن مصر واستقرارها الإرهاب باختصار شديد صناعة شيطانية بتستخدم أدواتها في الإنسان وتقدم لتحقيق الأهداف أمننا القومي في مصر يمثل بشكل مباشر من الموقف في ليبيا يعني كان أولى بينا إحنا أن إحنا نتدخل تدخل مباشر في ليبيا ولدينا القدرة إذا كنتم عايزين تغيروا وجه القارة الإفريقية في خلال عشر سنوات يتعمل برنامج قاري أو مشروعات قارية لبنية أساسية داخل القارة
Uh, we're still talking artificial intelligence and how it shapes the future. Uh, well, uh, Professor, talking artificial intelligence and also security. Right. Uh, and uh, as, as we've seen in the world of uh, security today, artificial intelligence and technology in general is playing a very important role. Right, right. As a matter of fact, artificial mm -hmm. intelligence, it helps in combating the crimes, as a yes. matter of fact, mm -hmm. and it also helps in detecting um, uh, what's wrong when it comes to um, um, challenges happening for security issues. Um, it helps also to identify um, and to get all the information that we probably might need uh, in order to make any kind of a checking. Um, um, and you can just get the record for anyone regarding the previous activities by um, using technology as well. So it really can help. Mm -hmm. So on the security level, it can help and also on the uh, medical level as well, on the social level, and during the break we were talking about how we were connected together socially, so uh, I think that it, it truly can help in different ways. And as I said before, that um, Egypt decided to have something which is called electronic uh, government, so by um, activating the idea of um, electronic government in this way, you can just get all the certificates and all the official papers easily and in no time and at the same time in a very comfortable way. Yes, artificial intelligence which is progressing rapidly uh, throughout the whole uh, world. Egypt is uh, today working on a new generation of universities. How are we going to have graduates today who are well acquainted to deal with uh, the world of technology and uh, aware of artificial intelligence. I think that this is also a very important point. And Egypt mm. is aware for such a critical issue. And that's why um, if we just follow the news that there is five technological universities are being inaugurated nowadays in the 6th of October city and in New Cairo city and in different cities across the country and across the board. So this is the first point. And the second one, because this is very important for the youth to be adaptable to such technological issues, there are today's initiatives and workshops uh, being held between the governmental sector and the private sector. Mm -hmm. um, 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 as we can see that there is something today which is called the city of knowledge that is available for each one just to, to register online and he or she can go and participate in any activity related to knowledge. There is also something else which is called the training academy for digitalization. So there is a framed and a determined plan in order to make the youth uh, be acquainted to such technological issues. Mm -hmm. The market today is different from the past. So today we are focusing on what the market really needs. Um, it's quite a bit different from the past because we can just find some jobs that might mm -hmm. be disappearing in the future. And mm -hmm. we can find some other jobs and some other businesses that is also connected closely with using technology. Now, let me just give you an example. I met some of my students uh, last week. They graduated from the college probably a few years ago. And when I asked them what do they work, um, um, they told me that they are making online business. Mm. So even the idea to open a new business nowadays, it's different. So it's not just about the store and the place but you can just make that online. Here we can just see how important it is to activate such a concept for the youth. Uh, definitely, and also the Ministry of uh, Planning is working uh, on that respect, uh, planning for Egypt's uh, future and uh, talking sustainability, sustainable development and the different projects. We can see artificial intelligence today also in the field of health right. and um, in various uh, operations around the whole world as well. Absolutely, Tari. Mm. When, it, when it comes to the medical um, level and the medical dimensions, um, um, I, I personally, I faced that when I made a surgery in my eyes and I think that uh, today you can just find um, physicians that they are performing and conducting medical uh, surgeries across the world and without without needing to travel to any country. They can just make that online and from his or her clinic uh, or something like that. So I think it's involved. And, uh, and this is also connected with the idea of why Egypt launched the, art, uh, the um, um, satellite, which is called Tiba One. Yes. Um, because they wanted to expand the activities and the function of the internet in every aspect in our life. This is quite a bit important. They wanted to bridge the gap between the deprived 
developed areas and the poor areas and also the urban and the rich countries. So we can just find a connection here between both sides. And that can really help it to push for sustainable development. And as a matter of fact, comprehensive development. And when I just say comprehensive development, I mean here the medical level, educational level, the political, the security. So every aspect, as I said before. And as a matter of fact, let's be frank with each other. We have other African countries, a country like Rwanda. I read that they decided to launch a satellite. Why? Because they wanted to make the internet to be free for each one. Mm -hmm. So they realized how important it is. And by the way, so Rwanda today is coming second when it comes to attracting investments. Mm -hmm. And so Egypt now realized how important it is to involve all of such a technological and digitalized concepts in our life. It's not just about life to be easier, life mm -hmm. to be comfortable, but it's more about how to attract, how to strengthen, how to expand, how to change the mindsets, how to build an economy, how to make a solid educational system. This is probably can be the best point here by using such tools. Uh, definitely formulating the way of how uh, the coming generation thinks is very important. Right. Uh, how to make them capable of uh, being uh, creative right. and uh, putting forward unconventional issues. Right. Do they need training? Do we need to train only the students or also coach the coaches? I this? think that everyone needs training nowadays. Mm. Uh, training can expand the mental level. Training can give different opportunities. Training can also uh, open a way for mutual um, ideas for mutual understanding, for mutual cooperation, because in our life we are being, uh, you know, we are just getting knowledge without any kind of a stoppage. And so I think that when it comes to the workshops, and this is why we have today an initiative which is called Initiative for All Craftsmen, and it helps to build up the skills for each one. As I said before, that we have the economy of knowledge. It's a different story from the past, because in the past we were talking about out how to make the economy to be um, strong by using the oil resources, by using the natural resources. Nowadays, it's different. It's more about how to build up the skills. It's more about how to put infrastructure. And Egypt has a plan to be a regional spot when it comes to the IT. Why we would like to be a regional spot? Because we would like to attract investments and we would like to strengthen the economy. Definitely. That will happen by using such ways. Uh, definitely it will. Well, Egypt uh, had also organized earlier the first international conference on artificial intelligence. Uh, let's watch the story. We'll be back. كانت أحداث وفعاليات منتدى شباب العالم متميزة ومتفردة وأتاحت لنا جميعا الفرصة لتبادل الرؤى والأفكار وتقبل الاختلاف والذي دلنا على أن الحضارات تتكامل وتتآلف ولا تتصادم أو تتسارع المؤتمر تفريغ هائل للطاقات السلمية وشحن إيجابي عظيم يدعو إلى الأمل والتفكير. كل الشباب اللي كان حاضر معانا من كل الدنيا أسعدنا وأسعد كل In cooperation with the Ministry of Communications and Information Technology, Minister of Higher Education and Scientific Research, Dr. Khaled Abdel Ghaffar, inaugurated the first international conference on artificial intelligence and modern information technologies and its impact on the future of innovation in Egypt. The meeting was attended by a number of former ministers, university presidents, heads of research centers and institutes, and also a group of scientists and experts in the field of artificial intelligence. Dr. Khaled Abdel Ghaffar began his speech by stressing on the major organs of the state in the field of artificial intelligence and the role of the ministry in establishing new colleges and scientific departments that specialize in the field of artificial intelligence 
as well as the development of scientific curricula in line with modern technologies. In order to prepare new generations for these emerging technologies, the first ever artificial intelligence faculty in Egypt was inaugurated in Qafr al-Sheikh University in July 2019, and that missions are being sent from the faculties of computers and information to specialized countries in the field of artificial intelligence to prepare them and qualify them to implement Egypt's national strategy in the field of artificial intelligence. He also pointed out the close cooperation with the Ministry of Communications to develop out a plan to establish the first Egyptian university for information technology. <laughs> مصر نور عينيهم دول املنا فيهم نبني بيهم مصر احلى بكره بيهم هم دول شبابها هم دول ولادها تفيد بلدك ولاسة تبني خير النجاح ترسم طريقة بالطموح وعلي تسير النجاح مش مستحيل للغاني أو للفقير هم دول شبابة هم دول ولادة Yes, a very nice song, Humadul Shabab. Those are the youth of Egypt because the youth of Egypt are the treasure of the country, uh, the ones whom we are investing in, and those who are going to resort and use also uh, all uh, the matters uh, regarding technology and artificial intelligence that we're talking about. Artificial intelligence and the media, right. uh, definitely also core relevant. We watch the different science fiction movies and um, uh, lots of the audience get like startled at, at what they see. That, that's very mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. And there is, again, as I said, uh, there is dramatic change happening. Um, um, today you can just find the, that the role of the media is not just on TV, but you can just find media programs, um, but on the social media. Um, there is today on YouTube, you can just find a daily or a weekly um, episodes created by different individuals from different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. And it gives a space for creativity, as a matter of fact. Um, and I think because of such movies, um, 
uh, the, like the scientific yeah. movies which are shown now. Yeah, I like think that we see here. Yes. Right, mm -hmm. right. I think it helps in expanding the imagination mm -hmm. for technology users as well. So I think that we are witnessing another different era. Yes. Um, that is based Here throughout on throughout history. How mm -hmm. had uh, the, the the science fiction and how the, artificial intelligence has been progressing? Right, that's very true. That's mm -hmm. very true. Yeah. And um, as you can see here, it says that um, it's all about acquiring new information, achieving um, goals and adaptation as well. That's, that's very mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, it started from the 50s of the last century. Yeah. Um, uh, and so, so many experiences mm -hmm. uh, it has been throughout history going right. on until they have uh, reached that uh, spectrum. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So if we just look from the positive side, because some people probably would also be critical and they would criticize using technology. But as a matter of fact, if we just make that um, imbalancing between the positives and the negatives, mm -hmm. I would go for the positive side. It could be very beneficial yes. for um, the human beings. Yeah. And it's enough to say that it can solve a lot of problems that we are um, having. Um, we, yes, we could have providing nowadays. just information, mm -hmm. it could also uh, provide some sort of protection from thefts. Um, That's true. And, and a lot. But how about uh, uh, here, Sophia, again, uh, the <laughs> robot and uh, the, way, the way she talks, the way she reacts. Well, uh, more concerning also the potential that artificial intelligence today has provided in, in order to, to help human beings. How right. is it going to be uh, really uh, uh, important for humanity? And also on, on Facebook here, for instance, uh, how uh, it has been included in the different issues. Facebook says passively it, it, it did uh, affect in a way or, or another. Well, more stories um, right. uh, around the whole world. However, artificial intelligence and kids, right. uh, this is another story. Right. Um, it right. could be a double-edged weapon, couldn't it? Right, right. Mm. So absolutely, yes. So um, that's why we have to be very careful about that. Mm -hmm. And there should be programs for the parents yeah. um, in order to be aware about how um, critical it is when it comes to technology. I have, for example, my nephew and I have my niece. Do you that? I have my... Um, um, 10 year old nephew who is just building um, his an channel on YouTube and I was truly astonished when I found a young kid like that mm. um, creating an account for making a channel for himself so I think that we have also to understand that the new generation that they are thirsty for using technology and we have to be very careful about that mm -hmm. we should put frames for this there should be also limits there should be also an orientation for the families mm -hmm. in order to be aware about how critical it is yes definitely there are also some terms that we all know like uh, uh, hacking for instance right, right. Uh, this and sense of terminology that we've been hearing right. this core relevant uh, to technology, uh, artificial intelligence will definitely help right. uh, just put this uh, phenomena under control. This is probably one of the functions for mm -hmm. artificial intelligence yes. and uh, you wrote in my article that I faced that on a personal level, like I found some hackers trying to hack my personal account mm -hmm. and that, would, that pushed me as a matter of fact to think about why do you do something like this and how we can just confront and face that and that pushed me to think about the idea idea of the National Council for Artificial Intelligence, which was launched a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And so this is one of the functions for this council. It just how can we protect technology consumers and technology users? Mm -hmm. And how can we put a frame for each one to move safely? Especially now, if we just consider other parts in our lifetime, I'm going to give you one example when it comes to the banking systems. Nowadays, we are using for any kind of financial transactions or any kind of bank transaction. We are using electronic and digitalized systems. Uh, let me just give you one example. The ATM machines, mm -hmm. most of us nowadays, they are using such machines, we wouldn't be able to use that without having sophisticated technology. So if we don't have a council, which is the national council that we have nowadays, that can put a safe frames by using uh, different techniques to help and to protect technology users at the end. Yes, Minister Khaled Abdel Ghaffar has stressed earlier the importance of 
coordination and integration among the different major organs in the field of artificial intelligence, establishing new colleges and establishing uh, different scientific institutes. But at the same time, we need uh, this sense of framework and we need this sense of organization uh, for uh, in artificial intelligence to work in the proper uh, sense right, of the word. Right, right. And this is why mm. we have today something which is called the Training Academy for Digitalization. Yes. Uh, there are very specific technological universities. The, um, um, there is also something which is called the City of Knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, there is something that is happening very positively, which is the Bank of Knowledge, as we talked about that before. All of them are closely relevant. All of them are closely related together. And I think in this way, that can serve at the end uh, those who are involved, not just in education, but in every aspect. Again, as I said before, um, it's going to be the age of information. It's going to be the age of um, how to get and how to shape and how to control um, information and data. And uh, just to make it finally, I think that, you know, um, and I also, I'm um, a firm believer of Egyptian mindset again. Um, when I traveled abroad, I was in Oman uh, a few weeks ago, as you may know, and I found Egyptians are contributing in different parts. So I have a strong um, um, emphasis when it comes to Believe. Egyptian, right, mm -hmm. when it comes to Egyptian mentality. And as Dr. Ahmed Zouel said before, just give the youth the capabilities, give them the tools, they will be flourishing, they will make something different in the future. Uh, definitely they will and uh, this is what is actually happening in Egypt today. We are investing in the youth, we are investing in the future and uh, having such an important session on artificial intelligence at uh, the World Youth Forum definitely has been also an eye-opener for the youth present to know more about uh, the challenges of artificial intelligence, to know more about this fancy world which is full of uh, expectation and also anticipation and creation is the magical key. I thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ahmed Abdel Taweb, Professor of uh, Linguistics at Menufeya University for joining us and uh, also a writer at Al Ahram uh, for uh, contributing to this episode and reading together uh, with us artificial intelligence as a big headline that is going to be definitely booming uh, in 2020 and beyond. Thank you very much for having me, Tariq. And I thank you, dear viewers, for joining us. I'm Tahrid Hussein, thanking you all for watching.